Hello amigos, this is Joy from Cordillar Technologies Bangalore working on my Spanish and by this time most of you might come to the understanding that Magento is an MVC architecture meaning it has a model, a controller and a view. So in this video we're going to be looking at the view part of it which is further subdivided into layouts, blocks and templates. What the hell are they? So let's get started. So I'm ju I just created a very simple module called Codilar Demo. So it has very basic files. If you are not familiar with how to create a module, you can go over to our uh, website and you can see the tutorial which we have on that. Uh, so this has a very basic uh, registration.php file and the module.xml and it has a version of 0 0.0.1. .0 Alright, awesome. So what we're going to try to do here is we're going to try to inject some HTML into our page. So I already created a product called test and this is how it looks like. Uh, it's hundred dollars. That's pretty expensive for a product which doesn't have any image, but bear with me here. So <clears throat> let's say I want to insert something here. So in between test and be the first to review this product, I want to insert some HTML. So I haven't decided what I want to insert yet, but let's say I want to insert something. Let's go with hello world. All right, so very original, I know. For that, I create a file inside view, front end, layout. So all our layouts is kept inside layout. Uh, okay, I didn't explain what layout is. So first let's see what layouts are. So this view part of Magento is divided. So let's go to the front end. That will make things easier. The view part of Magento is divided into or let's say further divided into three distinct parts. One is called the layout. One is called the block and one is called the template. So what the layout is, is so this page is can be, I mean, this page might be divided into further sub components for easier management like let's say this part here is the header uh, this part here is the left side of the page this part here is the right side of the page and this part here is the information or review section and this part is the footer and then this part is the copyright message so all these uh, divisions of a page uh, is taken care of using the layout so the layout itself is kind of like a so it's an XML, we have to write the layout in XML and the layout serves as sort of a skeleton for the entire page, you can say. So it's it's just, so it doesn't have, it doesn't actually have any data inside it. It's just a div here in the header, a div here in the content, a div here in the footer, uh, just a skeleton of it. Then what happens is the other, the HTML part along with the data is inserted into these containers which the layout has created like the header, the footer and so on. And these uh, data part which is inserting of the data inside the layout, this is taken care of by the block. So the, what a block is, so even, even in English if you think what a block is, a block is like a block of the page. So this header, let's say this header is a block. So this block will have all the data like the logo, the search, the sign in, create account, blah, blah. All these informations will be served by the block of header. So what the header block will do, it will insert itself in the layout first, first and then it would uh, insert the data here. And the block alone cannot do much because the block is a PHP file. I'm going to show you those files uh, in some time, uh, bear with me now. So this PHP file itself is only responsible for the logic, like what should the logo's image be, what should the name be, what should the search be, what is the total content uh, in, in the customer's cart, things like that. Uh, the actual HTML is rendered by one more part, one more division called the template. So remember this, a block and a template always go hand in hand. Without a template, a block is useless, without a block, a template will not even be rendered so it's useless so that's the layout block and template in a very simplistic example so we're gonna what we're gonna do now is so this page obviously has a layout we're gonna have to find out that layout file and then we're gonna insert this section I mean uh, our data in this section between the test which is the name of the product and then be the first to review this product for that let's go back to our code 
so I have this front end layout and I have created a file called catalog underscore product underscore view dot XML and if I go inside that file you can see inside the body tag I have created reference container name is equal to product info main and inside that I have inserted my block which is uh, which has a class which I'm gonna show you real soon and it has a name so this name just has to be unique that's all you need to care take care of you can name it anything you want I don't give I don't care and then inside that I mean it also has a template because like I said a block alone is pretty much useless so the template is Codular demo inside that we have a stock underscore left dot html uh, the reason I named them stock left is because my plan is to show the actual stock which is left for that product at that point of time. So we'll show something like only 100 left, only 50 left, buy now, things like that, you know. So that should pretty much render this template. So you can see I have named it stock underscore left dot PHTML. So all the templates needs to be put under the templates directory, just like all the layouts needs to be put under the layout directory. It's not layouts by the way, and it's templates. I know that can be confusing. Don't get confused. And then finally block is there in the block directory, the block with the capital B by the way. And here we have a PHP file, which is pretty much empty right now. It just extends this because all templates need to extend all blocks need to extend this so I didn't write anything inside that it's a very basic block and the template also has nothing for now this is just a comment to um, make the developer know where the block exists so now you might ask me Joy where the hell did you get that information from and I'll say good question but then I'm also going to say that I went ahead in the vendor directory and I went to the Magento directory inside vendor and there uh, you can see that it's written module backend module backup so they have a lot of modules for all the functionalities so everything is segregated and if I use a little bit of common sense I might come to the understanding that the module catalog might be responsible for rendering the product because it's a part of the catalog so I go inside the catalog I go inside view I go inside front end, I go inside layout and we have a couple of different layouts here again using the common sense we come to the understanding that catalog product view.xml might be the file which is responsible for rendering the view the product view makes sense so then I opened that file and I saw here that we have a container called product info main and that's what I used this is all the information I got just by looking at Magento's code and then I use that container name here and since I'm referencing that container I call it reference container and inside that then I inserted my block makes sense good now coming back to our code so I'll close this for now not important in our PHTML first let's do very something very basic like hello world again very original and then I'm gonna I'm gonna have to clean the cache by the way so I'm just gonna clean the cache real fast and I'll refresh the page and hello world so it came here uh, just where we wanted so this came here because this whole section this whole section here is the product info main which we have uh, given here and we are inserting this so this is getting inserted inside that and since it's getting inserted on the top on the, the first thing to get inserted so it's showing up here all right so hello world is not much interesting so let's go ahead and change that uh, instead of hello world let's do something dynamic let's create a function public function get data and here I'm gonna return uh, let's return something like date and the format should be let's say year month and day uh, so that's that's our function in the block and we can use that function inside our template as well I'm going to show you how so in our template we have access to a variable called block dollar block 
So we can use that variable anywhere we want to call the functions of our block. I'll show you how. Dollar block off. We created the function and we called it get data. Okay, let's call it something else. Let's call it get date because get data might be confusing. So get date. As you can see, we have get date. And we also have other bunch of different functions here which we did not create and that is because we extended this template which has all these functions built in. So again coming to get date and saving that, going and cleaning the cache. So don't forget to clean the cache because Magento caches the product page and the category page. So if you don't clean the cache your changes will not reflect. Alright so we have the date here. So that is something dynamic, that is something which PHP did and which the template just showed. And now we're going to do something even more dynamic like let's rename this function get uh, remaining quantity and we'll call get remaining quantity. So to get the remaining quantity here, first let's just return 10 and see how to show it. So we're going to write something like only then this, then left, a bunch of different exclamation marks because apparently I'm very excited for that. So I'm cleaning the cache, refreshing the page. Only 10 left, awesome. So now this 10 is again hard coded, not very useful. So to show the actual quantity left instead of uh, 10 right here, what we need to do is step one we need to fetch the product model so remember guys this is MVC so the actual product information will be inside the product model uh, next is we get the quantity from the product model and then finally we return it here sounds good Alright, so to get the product model, what we're going to do is, we're going to create another function and let's keep it protected, get current product. Here we have to uh, fetch the product model and we have to return that. So the way we will do that is, we're going to go to the constructor, we're going to create the constructor and we're going to inject another variable inside the constructor using dependency injection. So dependency injection is a whole different thing and uh, it's it's gonna take more than the scope of this video to explain. So I'm probably gonna make one more video for dependency injection. For now, know this, whichever object you want, you can put it inside the constructor and using dependency injection, Magento will give that to you. Pretty cool if you ask me. So we're gonna insert something called Magento Framework Registry. So this registry here is uh, one minute. So yeah. So this registry here, and this I'm, I'm just gonna store this in a private local variable called registry. So this registry is where Magento keeps the current product when we load the product page, so that we don't have to load the product page again and again in different blocks. So the more you know. Anyway, so now here we can get the current product just by doing this of registry and inside the registry the key would be product that would give us an object of the class Magento catalog model remember I told you it's a model and product so it's an object of this class and we're going to take that here in the first step so dollar product is equal to this of get current product next is we're gonna have to return the quantity so we'll do dollar product of get quantity all right and here we are anyway using that same variable so everything looks good let's clean the cache never forget to clean the cache coming here refreshing the page Oh, we didn't get the quantity and the reason we didn't get the quantity is the quantity is not saved directly in this uh, product model. So we need one more thing. We need the stock registry interface. So I think this is pretty cool that whichever object we need, we can just insert it into the constructor and we'll get that. 
So we got the stock registry interface uh, which is inside the Magento catalog inventory API stock registry interface and here we are gonna do something like uh, dollar stock is equal to this of stock registry of get stock item and it takes one parameter which is the product ID so I'm gonna give it product of get ID which will give the product ID and here I'm gonna return dollar stock of get quantity so this quantity is where the quantity is saved so if we do dollar product of get quantity that would not be uh, set in this product yet because we haven't loaded its stock item so the stock and the product are separate uh, entities and they are saved separately uh, we don't need to know that for now just know that if you want the quantity you need to load the stock registry and load the stock item and from there we can get the quantity all right looks good let's go for round two clean the cache never ever forget to clean the cache cache cleaned page refreshed only 100 left because 100 is the quantity let's go to the back end and here we have set the quantity to 100 let's change that to 56 I don't know why I chose that number but if we save the product oh shit I just got logged out no worries I'll log in back again I'll go to catalog products because that's where the products are I'm gonna go to this product which I have created I'm gonna come down and set the quantity to 56 again I don't know why I chose that number I'm gonna save the product I'm gonna refresh the page and I'm gonna see something like only 56 left so this is fetched from here that's pretty cool and that concludes this video I think so we have inserted one layout and we have shown some dynamic data inside that layout using a block and a template and you can make your layouts as complicated or as simple as possible you can use anything you want uh, any data you want from anywhere you want and you can just show it on the page using the layout so we have inserted here sorry we have inserted here you might insert in the footer if you want you might insert in the header if you want and you'll get a very dynamic page based on the layout system so that concludes the layout system which includes the layout the block and the template of magento 2 so if you have any doubts please feel free to ask me the questions in the comment section below and if you like this video please like it please subscribe to our channel so that i can continue making more videos not that i'm not gonna make more videos if you don't subscribe but please do subscribe thank you